Hello, this is Kevin Olson from TextLearn.com, and welcome to Lesson 6.3 of the Intro to Java series. In this lesson, we will be discussing the file output stream. And as always, the link to the lesson is available in the description for this video. So what we're going to be doing in this lesson is we will be using file output streams in order to save information to a file. The output process is as follows. First, we are going to determine what we want to save. So in the case of, for example, a string, we're going to try to save a string. Then we are going to declare a file object variable. So we have this file, and that is what we are going to be using to create and manipulate the file. It's going to store the file's location and things like that. Then we also have a file output stream, and that's what's going to be used to write to the file. And then we're going to have a try catch, which we will use the try block for saving the file. We will initialize the object using the file path, the file object. We'll determine if the file exists and create that new file if it does not exist yet. Then we initialize that file output stream with the file object. So we put the file object in that file output stream, and that tells the file output stream that we're going to save to this location. We convert the value that we're trying to save into bytes for saving. So we're going to convert a string of text into bytes. Then we're going to write those bytes to the file using the file output stream. And finally, we will close that output stream. So let's take a look at Eclipse and start working on an example. So I'm going to create a new Java project. It's going to call it 6 underscore 3. And I will add a new class. I'm going to call it test file out and just give that a main method. OK. So first things first is we will declare our file and our file output stream. So we're going to have file, file out. Or I'm just going to call it file, file equals null for now. And then we'll have file output stream, file out, and that'll be null as well. Of course, we have to import both of these classes from the Java I.O. package. And I will use a quick fix in Eclipse to add those. So now we have the file class imported and the file output stream class imported into our into our project here. Now the next step will be to use the try block. So we're going to, let's just for example, let's try to save a string of text to a file. So for our file out, we will have a, we have to initialize our file. So we'll have file equals new file. And then we are going to put the location that we want to save this file to in as a constructor parameter. So we're going to just call this file output.txt. That's going to be the name of our file that we are trying to save here. And we will also initialize that file output stream with that file. But to do that first, we're going to check to see if this file exists. So we will do if file.exists. And we can say if that's equal to false. Or we could just do if not file exists, same thing there. And then we can do file.create new file. So this will create a new file called output.txt in our program's directory. So that's creating the new file. Now we're going to have to initialize the file output stream with that file. So we'll have file out equals new file output stream and we will pass it the file that we are trying to save to. So now we have the created the file and we've initialized that file output stream with the file. So all that remains is for us to have some text that we want to save. So we'll say string text to save equals hello world. So we'll save that to that file. Next step is converting that string of text into bytes. So we're going to have to have an actual bytes array. 
and this array of bytes is just going to be all the bytes that we're going to be saving. And we can do this using, we are give it a name of text to save in byte format, so I'll just add bytes to the end of that. And that's going to be equal to text to save dot get bytes. And this get bytes method we can see encodes this string into a sequence of bytes using the platform's default char set. So this will convert our string of text into bytes. So this is converting hello world into bytes so we can save it. And now all we have to do is use the file output stream write method and we can pass those bytes, text to save bytes, into that stream and it will write those bytes to the file. So now we are pretty much done with the file saving. Only thing that remains is to close the file, the file output stream. So we'll do file out dot close. And we have to have a catch block in here. So we will just catch any exception that can occur. And we'll just use e dot print stack trace and print out whatever went wrong. So let's go ahead and save that. And I will open the project directory here, six underscore three. You can see there's no files in there right now called output.txt and when we run the file or when, when we run the program which I just did it created the new file output.txt and if I open that we can see that that new file has the text hello world in it. So we successfully saved some text into that output.txt file using the file output stream and the file object. So that is the basis of doing that. Now let's modify the program a little bit so we can save anything and we'll actually also get a file name. So we're going to have the user enter a string of text that they want to save and then we'll save that text that they enter to that output file that they define. So we're going to have to have a scanner. So we'll just make a new scanner. User input equals new scanner Oops, system.in. Okay. And I have to import the scanner class as always, so that is now imported. And then we can do system out print line. Please enter some text to save. So we're going to have them enter some text. And we'll say string. Actually, we already have a string text to save, so let's just use that same string, make this simpler. So let's put this up here. So string text to save is going to be equal to user input dot next line. So I'll just take whatever line they type in and save that into that string for now. Now we want to have them also be able to define a custom output file. So we can do system out print line, please enter a file name and it'll save it to that file. So we'll say string file name equals user input dot next line. So now we have a file name and instead of that output dot text in the file, now we have a file name in there. So we are creating a file with the file name that they define. So let's take a look at everything here. We declared our file in our file output stream. We initialized our file with our file name we got the text that they're going to enter. We created the new file. We initialized the file output stream with that file that they gave us. We convert text to save bytes into, well, we convert text to save into bytes. And then we write those bytes to the file and close it. So the only thing left is just to say system out print line saved. And we caught any exceptions in that catch block. Let's take a look at this and see if this works. Run the program. Please enter some text to save. Hello, my name is Kevin. Please enter a file name. Name is kevin.txt. Saved. Let's go to the directory. And we can see that there is now a new file called name is kevin.txt. And if I launch that, it says, hello, my name is Kevin within that text file. So we successfully saved that text into a file. Okay, let's take a look at the review exercise. Review exercise 6.3a, remember me. 
The instructions are to create a program which greets the user using their name. The program should ask what their name is if they don't already have it. And then when we relaunch a program, all it does is states their name. So it says, hello, I don't know your name yet. What is your name? I type the word Kevin. It says, I will remember that Kevin. Then I run the program again. It loads from a file. You can use whatever file you want. And it will load from that file the name. So just the first line in that file is just going to have my name in it. It says, hello, Kevin. I remembered your name. If you'd like me to call you something different, please enter that now. And I enter the word Bill. And now it says, I will remember that Bill. So all the program does is it saves the name to a file. And then when we run the program again, it'll load that name from that file, print it out, say, hello, Kevin, say their name or whatever. And then they can enter a new name and it will save that name instead and replace the old name. That's a pretty simple program and the solution is posted on the website. The next thing we're gonna do is printing output to a file using an output stream. So what we are going to do here is, where is it? That's the wrong example. I have that corrected, okay. So we're gonna use a print stream now. And what the print stream allows us to do is it allows us to print text to a file using the print line method, print F method, print method. Just like, it, just like we would print text to the console, we can also print text into a file with this method. So let's take a look at that. And let me just start over from scratch here almost. We'll leave the try catch in there, but I'll just delete everything. Delete everything so we can start fresh. Okay. So in our try block, what we can do is we can have the file output stream. So we'll do, we'll still need this. Okay, so we'll have file, file equals new, file, and we'll just call this file output.txt. We have a file named output.txt. Then we can, we actually don't have to use the create new file method if we don't want to. When we initialize the file output stream with a file, if it's not already there, it'll automatically create that file for us. Let me see, I'll just delete my output.txt in there to show you how that works. So we'll have file output stream file out equals new file output stream and we'll pass it that file and then we'll just close that file output stream so file out dot close so let's run this and see what happens i have my that over there oops yeah i have that over there okay and there we go so i run that and we can see over here, it created a new text file called output.txt. And we did not have to use the file.create new file method. And that is because when we ran this line here, it automatically generated that new file for us. So we didn't have to worry about that. Now we'll leave that as is, and we will create our print stream. So print stream print out equals new print stream and we can pass the file output stream so our file out into that print stream and we have to import the print stream that is another thing that has to be imported like pretty much any object in java so we're going to import that from java io so now my import statements have importing file the file output stream the print stream and the scanner which we're, we're not using the scanner right now so i can actually get rid of that guy Okay, so now we're going to use this print stream to print text to the file. So we can do print out dot print line hello. So that'll print a line that says hello. Print out dot print line world. We're going to print hello world to our file called output dot text using these print line methods. And of course, you could use print f print. There's a lot of different methods ways we could go about doing that. So we print that text to the file using the print stream now and we need to, what do we need to do next? We need to use the printout.flush. We have to flush that 
stream and that's just something we'll talk about that a little more I believe in the next section but we had to flush the stream when we're done using it and we had to close the stream so print out dot close so in summary here we created a new file called output.txt by initializing it into a file output stream and then we created a print stream and initialize that print stream with the file output stream. We then use the print stream object to print out to print the words hello world to that file. We flush the stream, we close the stream, and then we close the file output stream. And any exceptions get caught in that generic exception E. So let's try running this and see what happens. So we don't have a, anything in here. Let's delete that old file and run the program. So we run the program. No console text. Generated that file output.txt. We open that up. And the text within output.txt is now hello world. So that is the file output stream with a print stream. So let's take a look at the review exercise for this section. Review exercise 6.3b. So this is a continuation of that word count program that we've been kind of working on for a while. And the instructions here are to modify the word count program from the previous review exercise so that now instead of writing the text to a console, it will write the output text with the number of times each word occurs to a specified output file. So which file would you like to run the word count on? Some words.txt. It loads all the words in some words.txt, counts them all, and then which file would you like to save the word count to? And we save it to a file called countedword.txt, and then now that countedwords.txt should say, you know, this word occurred one time, this word occurred two times, this word occurred three times, and so on and so forth. So it saves it to that file. And I will have the solution posted here shortly. Okay, thanks for watching and take care.